Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us of a powerful supplication that was made by the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and his companions during a time that was really, really difficult. That time was when they were told that the enemy had prepared an army and they were on their way to attack the Muslims. So with that concern and the difficult situation, they made a supplication that extinguished all their fears and worry. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent help and assistance such that they were victorious over the enemy. It is a similar supplication to that of the Prophet Abraham, Ibrahim alayhi salam, may peace be on him, when he was cast into the fire by his own father and family members and the community. Just because he called people towards Allah, he became an enemy. So he said a few words and with those words, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused a miracle to happen. The miracle was that the fire was no longer hot, it became cold and this is mentioned in the Quran. But in Surah Al Imran verse number 170, Allah speaks of these powerful words that actually converted a difficult situation into comfort and ease. So these words are like Allah says in the Quran, حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلِ Allah is sufficient for us and He is the best disposer of our affairs. So basically they handed their affairs to Allah. With their helplessness, they kept saying, حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلِ Allah is sufficient for us. There is nothing that we have control of, but rather it is Allah who has control of it and gives us to a certain extent. So this was verse number 173 of Surah Al Imran. Allah makes mention of it. I've only spoken of that supplication because in any situation, my brothers and sisters, remember, Allah is sufficient for us and He is the best disposer of our affairs. He knows best what will help us and how we will achieve the comfort in our times of crisis. And this is why Allah says, actually, when you lay your trust in Allah correctly, you begin to understand the plot of the devil. The devil's plot is to make you worry about things that you're not supposed to be worried about. You worry about the future. You worry about things. You worry about whether or not uh, something is going to happen 10 years from now. Subhanallah. That is shaitan playing with those who, who are his allies, subhanallah. So Allah says in verse number 179, in fact 175 of Surah Al Imran, Allah makes mention of this plan and plot of shaitan. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says quite clearly, إِنَّمَا ذَلِكُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ يُخَوِّفُ أَوْلِيَاءَهُ فَلَا تَخَافُوهُمْ وَخَافُونِ إِن Indeed, those type of thoughts and that type of worry and that type of negativity, that is shaitan who creates fear in those who are his allies. So Allah says, don't fear shaitan. Don't fear the devil's worries that he creates within your system, but rather fear Allah, be conscious of Allah, develop a relationship with Allah. And inshallah, if you are true believers, that will bring about a sense of comfort. In kuntum mu'minin, if you are really believers in Allah, lay your trust in Allah. Say, hasbun Allahu wa ni'mal wakil, Allah is sufficient for us. That is a fact. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is indeed sufficient for us. So my brothers and sisters, I pray that we can use this supplication in order for us to achieve comfort. A condition of it is you must be a believer. You must have the conviction. You must realize and understand the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there will be worries, there will be concerns, there will be things that happen in our lives, but it will never go beyond a certain point because we will be very, very comforted to know that Allah is in control and whatever He does is the best for us. May Allah make it easy for every one of us 
in any form of crisis and at any time when we are in difficulty. Amen. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us some of the crises that we will face. And he then again repeats to us verse number 186 of Surah Ala Imran, what exactly he wants us to do to achieve goodness. So he says, Like he told us in the past, you will definitely be tested with your wealth, the fluctuations, a day you have, a day you don't, a day you make a profit, a day you make a loss. And Allah says, and wa anfusikum in yourselves, whether it's your health or the lives of those around you. Allah says, we're going to test you. It is very difficult for children to witness their parents who have brought them up, especially in middle age, if the parent were to pass away. It's very difficult for children to witness that, to see it. They would need a lot of help. They would need counseling. Perhaps they would need to build their faith and conviction in Allah. They would need to understand the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of sending us onto the earth. And subhanallah, may Allah make it easy for everyone. So Allah says, we will test you. We will test all of you. Then Allah says something else that he didn't say before this. You will hear a lot of abusive words, harmful words, words that are very low in their meaning, you know, cheap words that will be used against you by people of other faiths. So whether it is you know, all of the disbelievers, the categories that are mentioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, some of the people of the book and some of the mushrikeen who are those who associate partners with Allah. In a nutshell, those who follow other religions, those who don't follow your faith, you will hear a lot of bad words from them. Subhanallah. This is Allah telling this to us when he revealed the Quran to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that you know what? You are going to hear some really nasty things about Islam, about the Muslims. You will hear some really, really bad words leveled against you by those who don't follow your faith, those who don't agree with your faith. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us these things. So the things he mentions here, the tests that you will face within your wealth and yourselves, the lives and your health, as well as the bad words that you will have to hear. How should I react to it? Should I get angry and uptight? And should I, you know, uh, create a disaster out of something that is not as big sometimes? Should I make a bigger problem uh, of, of the problem that is existing in front of me? What should I do when I hear all these words? I need to know. So Allah tells you, well, that's a crisis. If you want comfort during that crisis, as amazing as it may sound and as simple as it is, Allah says, if you bear patience and develop taqwa, it's the best thing that you could do. So what's the best thing you could do? Allah says, bear patience. They say bad words. We know they're saying bad words. Many people have said bad words about Islam and later regretted it to the degree that they've come to Islam as a result of their ignorance. And then they started learning about Islam and then they came to Islam. Subhanallah. So Allah knows in his divine plan what exactly he wants. But when they say these bad words, don't react in a way that vindicates them. Don't react in a way that proves them correct. When they say Muslims are hooligans, if you start screaming and yelling, you've just proven what they have said. So Allah says, don't do that. What you should do, bear patience, be calm, be relaxed. And you know what? You must develop a good relationship with Allah, develop taqwa, be conscious of Allah. Allah during those times become a better person. So I'm going to do two things. When I hear people say bad things about me or about Islam and I hear really nasty, abusive words, slander, whatever else it may be, I'm going to be very patient, number one. Number two is I'm going to improve myself further to become a better person with my relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in that way, it will definitely help me. And Allah says, part of this taqwa is to constantly think about what Allah has created, how big Allah is, how the creator is supreme. He is the deity. He is the one and only. And that's why in verse number 190, 191 of Surah Al-Imran, Allah tells us, 
إن في خلق السماوات والأرض واختلاف الليل والنهار لآيات لأولي الألباب Indeed, in the creation of the skies and the earth and the, the rotation of the night and the day, there are signs for those with sound intellect, those who ponder, those who remember Allah, and they ponder over the creation of Allah while they are standing or sitting or on their sides, they ponder. They ponder over the greatness of Allah. So if you were to ponder over who you are, where you came from, where you are right now, where you're going, subhanAllah, and the creation of Allah, how beautiful it is, how huge the creation of Allah is, it will really, really help you overcome a lot of difficulty. So the point here is to remember Allah upon all conditions. When you're standing, when you're sitting, when you're lying down, when you're working, no matter what you're doing, keep your tongue moist in the remembrance of Allah. كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يذكر الله في كل أحيانه. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم used to remember Allah during all his times. All the time. He would remember Allah no matter what he was doing. So remember Allah and see how you're comforted. It's amazing. We're going through challenging times and we will still go through many different types of challenges. If one is resolved, another one will come. Allah says, that's the whole reason why we created you. Challenge after challenge. When a person goes to school, they expect exam after exam and you know what, if they did not have examinations, there would be something wrong with that school. So Allah says at the end, like you're going to graduate, you're going to graduate on the day of judgment based on how well you did with the exams we gave you in your life and the tests and the challenges. And this is why Allah says, those who disbelieve when we've given them, it doesn't mean that we're happy with them. Don't let that annoy you and don't let that deceive you. They have provision for a short time. You need to please Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with every one of us.